Well, after an awesome uh, speech by uh, Professor Jagannathan taking us to the universe and then uh, a fiery speech by uh, Professor Ganesh bringing us down to reality to uh, Earth and India and our specific problems. Uh, I don't see him around here. But, um, you know, and uh, the gentleman there who went on prophesizing that, you know, so many Indians, brilliant Indians have gone away from India. Uh, I happen to be from University of Roorkee and uh, it's currently IIT, but I'm very proud it's University of Roorkee, not IIT. Okay, because I have this fight with my son who has joined IIT. And believe me, like uh, Professor Ganesh said, if I had an option to go back, I would not have put him in IIT. I would have put him in probably BIT. Just because the humongous number of students in IIT today has kind of diluted, uh, you know, it's... it's uh, uh, you know, uh, crux of uh, providing good edu or quality education. We also talked about, you know, education and we just blame education. Uh, I just want to go back a few years. Uh, I mean, I keep telling this to people. Uh, 10,000 years back, we believed in Ram. Okay, 2,000 years back, I think Jesus Christ came in. Uh, 800 years back, Rahim came. And guess who came in 2000? Can anybody say? Who came around in 2000 to help us? Who is our God today? Or whom I can't do without today? Whom do I go for answers? Exactly. God bless you. It's Google. Okay. Today I Google. I still learn. Okay. I'm still learning. After, I don't know, I think I've just completed 50. Got a lot of gray hair on top. Uh, I still learn a, a whole lot. And believe me, I Google. I Google all the way through. Okay. Uh, I don't have to go to IIT or you know, other places. My son is studying in IIT. He takes probably more Coursera courses than IIT courses. Khan's Academy. How many of you have seen Khan's Academy? Okay, believe me, I get my fundamentals cleared even now from Khan's Academy. Everything's on the web. Everything's free of cost. Everything's open source. Let us not blame the education system. Let's blame ourselves. Okay, we need to be innovative. We need to go up and ask questions. Okay, more questions you ask, more answers you get. Well, um, coming back to what I do, what I believe in, uh, living with robots. Uh, Say, at uh, the time of Industrial Revolution, nearly a uh, decade back, uh, robots came in, robots played a big part in our lives, uh, in the manufacturing sector. They kind of automated things in manufacturing sector, and they did things by themselves. They did things where, uh, you know, uh, they were you know, pre-programmed, they were stuck at a place, you know, doing mundane, uh, repetitive jobs with human beings over a process, you know, a long period of time <coughs> could make mistakes in. So robots were you know, introduced to help relieve uh, the stress from normal humans you know, while doing, for doing mundane jobs. Then you know what, slowly people felt that they could be given some amount of intelligence. Okay? They gave robo some intelligence. Uh, they you know, made it do a couple of you know, more things on its own. It could decide what to do. Believe me, I've been consulting for industries. Uh, uh, of course, I've, I've just relocated from Pune to Chennai. I uh, consulted for industries where robots, you know, uh, typically robots are meant to be, you know, stationary in factories doing a certain job. Here, the robots move 20 meters across. A 300 kg robot moves across just to maximize its time. Okay, it'll cut a long I beam. Okay, uh, it'll cut a pipe. And while the pipe is moving on the conveyor belt, the robot is standing still. Why waste the robot time? So it moves across 10 meters, it cuts a sheet. It moves across another 5 meters, it cuts uh, our welds, uh, the pipes. And then it comes back again and starts uh, cutting the beams once more. So, you know, you optimize robot time, you give, you know, give it intelligence on the fly. And then what's happening now? Okay, we are already in 2014. We are trying to make it you know, artificial intelligent, make it learn, okay, so that it can cut, give it, give it any geometry, okay. You have 3D cameras, they're a little expensive, they can take photographs of the job, okay, draw splines on the surface, find out the control points, and then go ahead and, you know, cut a hole on uh, a 3D geometry, which is uh, unknown. So what I'm going to be doing is, I'm going to be talking about some innovations that we have done over the past few years. I worked in the industry for 21 years, and then believe me, I left a very cushy job at Siemens. I was one of the eight <coughs> um, people in the design office, as it's called in Siemens. We don't have fancy designations across the world. And um, I was uh, working with the Asia Pacific folks uh, on uh, the different designs that Siemens used to do. 
uh, and then I came down to you know building robots to help education through robotics and uh, as well as you know innovate uh, uh, or, or you know, kind of uh, improve the innovation process through games and other things and that's how I got uh, involved with uh, Chris and his team and Rafe. This is a classic thing that you know people ask. You know, uh, I, I go around meeting friends and they ask me, "What do you do?" I say, "I make robots." And the first thing the lady comes up and says, "Do you think the robot can clean the home for me? It's painful." Our children, you know, when I teach them, actually, this is the first Saturday probably that I'm here, and not in Saint Mary's School, Pune. Eight o'clock to twelve o'clock is uh, my time at Saint Mary's, Pune, with uh, children, teaching them robotics. And we have won the Indian Championships. We have won uh, and gone to uh, the U.S. We have won the Asia Pacific Championship, gone to Australia, a lot of stuff. And uh, the children ask, you know, do you think the robot can make the bed for me? You know, my mom always screams, you know, at me uh, for not making my bed, and it's a very painful process. I just run away, you know, to school. So then, you know what? Uh, there are robots that clean. You can just Google around, and you'll find at least a hundred companies uh, offering robots which uh, clean the household. You know, it's a standard uh, closed-loop control system, which goes about, you know, finding. Um, uh, you know, corners, edges, okay, it hits a wall, it comes back, takes a different route, okay, vacuums the whole floor for you. That's, you know, a standard control system. What's the toughest part of cleaning the home? Cleaning windows, cleaning the grills, okay, cleaning all the different curios that you have at home, you know, dusting. That's probably more painful than even, you know, sweeping the floor. So then, every home has different shape of a grill. Every home has different curios kept on different, you know, pedestals, different showcases. And that's when you want some kind of an artificial intelligence built in, where the robot learns, you know, as it goes about doing its task. And believe me, uh, it's not science fiction that I'm talking about. There are robots doing this today. Okay, albeit a little expensive. Okay, uh, we have to get into mass production, bring the costs down. Uh, that's for the production people uh, to take care of it. But in, in today's world, it's being done, and uh, it's possible. There are a whole lot of sensors available uh, for the robots to figure out, you know, where, what. Uh, you have cameras, you have uh, image processing algorithms, uh, third bit controllers, which you know are probably like, uh, a couple of millimeters uh, in size, which can help do it. So uh, that's the easier task, but then like you know, mopping is what uh, uh, you know, or, or cleaning uh, is what is uh, tough. <coughs> then uh, this is something that we have got into recently. Farm help, okay, robots uh, helping, uh, you know, farming. Uh, I just got approached by uh, a few uh, farmers from uh, Pune who had a major task of de-weeding the farm. You know, once, you know, your, um, your uh, <coughs> rice or, you know, wheat or whatever is harvested, okay, and not threshed, what happens is before the next uh, what you call sowing season comes in, all these farmers migrate or all the laborers migrate to the city to do jobs for you know, a couple of months before they come back again. And even though they are paid more uh, at the farmland than at the city, the painful process of de-weeding the uh, farmland uh, is what stops the laborers from coming back. So they want robots to help de-weed this and you know, can it be done? Well, the first thing is we went to God, asked Google, you know, are there things like that? And then believe me, there were innovations made. They were costing about 25,000 euros. Okay, uh, there are people selling it in the Netherlands for 25,000 euros, obscenely expensive. But then uh, we just asked around as to what would they, you know, uh, be able to afford. And they came back saying that they would, uh, they are willing to pay even up to 50 to 60,000 rupees for a robot, which is pretty good actually and uh, can be easily done. So uh, the next thing that uh, comes about is pesticides, spraying pesticides. Okay, again a painful process, uh, and uh, it has to be done uniformly. Okay, uh, a person going around about spraying it, okay, uh, is not doing you know justice to uh, the pesticides being uh, sprayed. So uh, if if there's a robot around to help uh, do that, uh, it would be pretty uh, effective. We are looking at that too. And then even planting, okay, uh, uh, the, or sowing the seeds or, or, so, you know, or replanting when uh, you go about doing 
uh, you know, the, the whole farming process. Uh, all these are very uh, possible and uh, you won't believe it, uh, uh, luck favored me, uh, there's a colleague of mine whom I'm working with on this uh, in Pune. He had visited uh, Germany uh, a week back uh, you know, for farming related equipment. He is uh, a fertilizer supplier and he's uh, the one who is uh, helping me uh, go about this. And uh, he got this video to show to me. They had this amazing competition there and uh, let me see if I can, okay. And believe me, children have made this robo. And uh, let me just show you this. This is uh, a competition that was organized for farming. And uh, you have these robots going around, okay, figuring out where there are plants, okay. See, it's, it's trying to avoid a plant so it doesn't go over it. It goes through the different, you know, alleyways. And then you can do different things with it, okay. You could start plucking out. Uh, you know, your weeds, you could start spraying around insecticides. And believe me, they have brought the cost of this down to as much as 800 euros. Okay, it's as cheap as that. Forget 25,000 euros, we're talking about robots now at 800 euros. And uh, the beauty about it is somebody talked about, you know, funding and other things. I don't know, somebody was asking me, like, where do I go? I've got innovations and then, you know, I need funding. German uh, embassy here, in fact, uh, I should be going there sometime uh, in July or, or, you know, beginning August. They are having a, a big expo and a meeting in uh, Delhi and they are bringing, I think, you know, 100,000 euros or more for this kind of, uh, you know, help. Uh, we may not be manufacturing the robots, but we may be writing software on top of it or artos for it or, you know, uh, small pieces for it. Make a prototype to catch folks for jumping signals. How many of you jump signals regularly? None of you? Do you all have a, you know, well, come on, raise your hands, feel free, it's, it's a free country, I'm not going to penalize you, okay, I'm not going to ask you for your license, license or like, you know, fine you a uh, hundred bucks. But believe me, uh, it's one of the most painful things that happen uh, in a country today. You'll keep jumping signals and believe me, uh, you know, you'll meet me in the next signal, you know, where you're stopped and, and I, I have this obscene thing, you know, this, this little pleasure that I have, I just look down my window and I sneer at them saying, ha you jump the signal, I caught up with you, you know. and. Um, well, uh, this is what we did as a prototype uh, three years back. Uh, you know, that's how people jump signals. One and all knows about it uh, in India. It plagues uh, India. What uh, is tougher is it leads to situations and, you know, deadlocks like this uh, more often than not. Yesterday I was caught for about 25 minutes uh, at the Taramani, uh, you know, a traffic jam just because of this. And, um, well, more than anything, it's a hazard to the poor policemen and, um, uh, his, uh, you know, uh, people who kind of run behind a motorcyclist or run behind, you know, a vehicle to catch them, you know, while they have jumped signals. So, um, well, you know what? Why can't robots take care of all that for you? And believe me, we have done a prototype. Okay? And how did we do that? That's my baby. Oops. Ah. You know, that's my baby, which does this. And believe me, four years back, we made uh, a board which is, you know, as big as your uh, pen drive, okay. Uh, our goal was to make it below uh, 10 grams, okay. So, um, uh, the whole board is as big as your pen drive. It's below 10 grams. It has, you know, it's about 9.7 grams. It's got a 32-bit microcontroller. It's got 13 sensors on it and it sits on that quad, okay. The quad weighs uh, probably less than, you know, 600 grams uh, total including the battery. Of course, uh, this uh, is not the quad that, you know, we made. Uh, this is something that I pilfered out of the net, okay, for the show. But uh, it's a, a quad as, you know, big as this on my palm, which is on top of your red lights, you know, or all, all your signals. And as soon as, you know, somebody crosses uh, a signal, it just takes off, okay, it takes a photograph of uh, the number plate with, you know, the signal so that, you know, you know that, you know, it's being caught. The geolocation is there, okay, it's geotagged. Uh, it's got a timestamp, and uh, by the time it comes back and rests on uh, the post, you know, charging itself, the data has gone back to uh, the police station for them to, uh, you know, do uh, take the call. And believe me, it's, it was, it's pretty much efficient. It's just that you know the government process is taking time for implementing this, but um, I'm, I'm sure like soon you'll find these kind of little quads running all over the place. Typically, even if you're crossing the white line, you know, a signal, people stop over the zebra crossing. That's an offense. Okay, uh, the quads can easily, you know, just sitting on top, can take photographs, take a number plates, and, uh, you know, it's an auto find that you get uh, at home.
and this has been done. I mean, it's been prototyped and done, and it works. Uh, well, let's complicate things a little more. Okay, uh, we talked about simple things. Uh, I don't know. Uh, okay, uh, you. I don't know how many of you have heard of Internet of Things. Okay, yeah, excellent. Wow, cool. Okay, so uh, Internet of Things uh, is nothing but you know all devices talking to each other. You know, very amicably. Uh, it could be devices at home, it could be devices uh, on enterprise. Uh, but then I prefer to call it, uh, this is something which I call, uh, this is there on my uh, visiting card too, I call it embedded to enterprise. You have a zillion embedded uh, you know, systems, they are all talking to enterprise and cloud servers. Believe me, like I have my you know, presentation on cloud on my uh, uh, phone, uh, I would not even need that okay, uh, to present. And today if anybody is storing something on uh, a hard disk, well uh, they are ancient they need to go to the grave. Uh, so, uh, how does uh, it work? Okay. Well, we combine terrestrial and aerial. We saw terrestrial robots, we saw aerial robots. Okay. Let us make them talk to each other. Let us make them you know, uh, synchronize uh, with each other. So, well, uh, this is one of uh, you know, the prototype kits that we make and uh, those are the quads that we make and uh, you know, they talk to each other. Where would you want this? Uh, to be done. Okay, uh, a classic uh, example of what we did was back uh, to farming again. I talked about farming. Uh, we had this uh, vineyard uh, in Nasik uh, where um, you know the grapes production had you know the quality of grapes uh, had kind of you know dropped down drastically, uh, and they wanted to you know kind of control it, and you know it was a, a very long drawn process. So uh, and believe me, um, the robot technology is mine. Okay, the what you call plant and you know uh, the other related technologies uh, uh, you know a couple of my friends who wanted uh, you know uh, this done so the quad flies on top you know over the trees okay uh, in rows and then believe me it's got a 2000 dollar photo uh, chromatograph camera on it so it takes photographs of the leaves okay a central computer somewhere you know crunches all those numbers figures out from the leaf what are the nutrients that are lacking you know on that plant or the series of plants. And then you know what, my little robot there down on the floor goes around, okay, drops uh, different uh, uh, fertilizers depending upon what nutrients are needed. Okay, uh, it is a complete closed loop system and uh, well, uh, to be honest, we have not tried the efficacy of it, okay, uh, it just stayed as uh, you know, uh, a very preliminary proof of concept, but uh, it can be done, I mean it is not that it cannot be done, uh, it works. It started getting artificial intelligence too, but then what about us? Excuse me. I mean, you know, are we going to like you know sit back, relax, and you know go to the Bahamas for a vacation? Well, you know what my children did to me. This is what they did to me. And believe me, this is a photograph of mine, where you know the children pinned a blue balloon on my hair. I mean, I uh, mentor an all girls team, the only all girls team uh, probably in the world that takes part. Somebody talked about women's empowerment. I strongly believe in that, and uh, they fixed that and. Uh, then somebody drew a bulb on top of it too. Uh, it's on one of my Facebook, uh, you know, pages. And uh, well, then I have to put the thinking cap on and be, you know, ten steps ahead of the robot. The thief is always ten steps ahead of the police, right? So then, you know, I have to be, you know, I have to put my thinking cap on, you know, light my lamps on, go, you know, search Google, you know, go to Khan's Academy or like uh, Coursera, and uh, figure things out uh, for myself. So well, I guess I'm on time and. Uh, uh, you do the question answers fast, we get to T faster. So, please. And then if you still have questions, you can always contact me through Rife, uh, you know, uh, feel free to ping me whenever. So, why is Indian robotics in such a bad state? When I say master in robotics, my dad will say ETH, CME and stuff. Why you do not have something here? Uh, probably like we are not making I the news, uh, the politicians are making the news, that is all. I okay. I study in a university where that is robotics, Amtech Robotics, and there uh, you have Lego Mindstorms. Sad. I mean, I, I've been a Mindstormer since 2002, but that's plastic. You know, that, that's for my kids to play with, and you know, uh, children at sixth standard to play with. Uh, we make kids. In fact, uh, we are the uh, Indian, uh, the only Indian people, uh, you know, company which makes model robotics kits. Okay, and uh, you know, uh, we have robotics competitions. This is unfortunately, I, I guess, I shall blame the you know media a little bit for that. Probably they are you know concentrating more on politicians. Uh, like uh, Professor Ganesh said, you know, uh, we need to have competitions at the scale of cricket and you know football in India for robotics. 
US first is exactly like that. And even more, if I need a dynamic cell, I have to get it from Korea. Why don't I have something? Sorry, from you have? If I need a dynamic cell, a servo, huh? I have to go get it from Korea. So sad. You know what? Uh, the other beautiful thing is, my kit is 100% made in India. It's made in Pune and made in Rabale, okay, in Navi Mumbai. We are not sourcing a thing from China. Do your Google search properly. You should land up at Wi-Fi Robots. And we manufacture every single thing in Pune. There are at least eight companies in Chennai I know who supply robotics parts. So, uh, you know, I, th I think we are already there the last few years. I sit at my home, you know, order parts from India and do it. You don't have to go to Korea. I, I promise you that. For example, T estates. Yes. For example, T estates here, and also palm oil estates. Yes, uh, I would like to. Okay, that reminds me. We did this demo at uh, Guwahati, you know, where it went across a hill uh, on the T estates uh, for this. So we have done the demo. Uh, in fact, uh, if I had brought my laptop along, I would have shown you the video. But there's a video where the quads go across a hill. You know, it can traverse anywhere. You know, we have got. Uh, you can just give the geolocations, and it will go across. Yes, it can do the hills. Sure. Um, hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Arjun Mehta and I run a recycling company. And my kind of industry is uh, where innovation is required on a daily basis, right? And my question, um, I think, you know, similar to someone down there, you know, ask, asking about environment and sustainability and things. My question is really on the mindset of an individual, not the population, uh, you know, on the population at large. Even though innovation is happening in certain pockets, there is still a mindset where people strive for short-term goals such as you know marks in an exam or profits in the business and things which obviously you know curbs the long-term innovative capabilities of anyone of the population at large i'm not talking about the you know pockets where innovation do happen whether it be in the u.s as that person mentioned or you know pockets here but how can that mindset change to think of the long term instead of term uh, you know we need to have you know stability probably from you know the government side and people Okay, uh, any startup, believe me, uh, this is Gujarati saying, which you know, uh, Gujarati told me that, needs a thousand days. I mean, I, I can't speak Gujarati, you know, that well. But he says that a thousand first day is when, you know, you kind of start turning around. If you're patient for the first thousand days, don't look at short-term goals. If you're patient for a thousand days, that's three years, you know. Uh, then on, from thousand first day, you know, you start looking at uh, returns. So uh, that has to kind of got to be inculcated. And uh, like we rightly said, when we started manufacturing the robots, I had a major difficulty with the manufacturing folks on just the paint quality. Forget everything else. Saab, ye to chalta hai. I said, excuse me, the chalta hai doesn't work with me. Okay, I mean, for some reason, like, you know, the kids which are going to be using this and, you know, they need to look at, you know, quality. I had to drive it down. It took me more than a year to actually drive down, you know, just paint quality. Uh, please keep your questions coming uh, to Raif and to me and uh, we'd love to, you know. And, and you know, uh, as I want to end, the first thing that you do is, you know, when somebody says that, do you think this is possible? Okay, just take that question and convert it into a product. Okay, and believe me, you know, you'll make your millions. Okay, uh, that's how, like, you know, I, I, I keep working. So just you know, whenever say, somebody says, you know, do you think this is possible? Just say yes, and then go back home and, you know, work towards the solution. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Secretary. <laughs>